you, sweetheart. Where are they? He's part of a crew at this high-end heist job. I got a buddy downtown. He's been chasing these clowns for a month. Perfect. You're in How the bathroom well, like me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not in a bathroom. I am actually in a, uh, like a warehouse room with a bunch of sanitizer at my sister's job. So. Oh, wow. I am standing on the jacuzzi right now. <laughs> That's that's a lot better than I am. Okay, this I got is the only before. place in the house where I can get Wi-Fi. Like this is it's oh, crazy, really? and I have a bathroom. So in the bathroom, that's surprising. That'd be the last spot I'd imagine. <laughs> Are you in LA right now, or no? I'm in. Um, I'm hiding in a lake in the middle of the United States in Missouri. Oh, wow! Look at that. I like that. Yeah. Get away a bit, huh? Very cool view. Oh. How is everything? You're doing okay throughout these times and everything? Yes. Uh, yes, I think we're I think we're good. We're just being a little bit careful because we're right now we this is my mother in law's house, so okay. I'm just trying to be very careful, you know, not going to crowded places. Really yeah. hearing the story, nobody's wearing the mask. Nobody's like they don't care. Wow. Yes. It, it, I, it's crazy. I'm in Chicago currently, and it's the same thing. I mean, it's a big city, but um, people have just moved on, but it's still going on. You know, it's not over yet. So Exactly. And the numbers are going up. I don't know yeah. what to believe anymore. Yeah, just, just got to be mindful and careful, you know, for others too, especially elderly and all that. Exactly. So that's always important. Exactly. But hey, on the positive note, uh, so I saw your movie, uh, really cool stuff. Okay, we have stuff going on here. Um, <laughs> yeah, working environment. Uh, tell me what attracted you to this film? Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is this your first uh, American kind of English spoken film? Uh, yes, it is actually. Wow. Uh, wow. Well, it's the second one, but it's the, the first one, it was very small. So, mm -hmm. yes. Kind of like the first one. Yeah, with the main um, role, at least you know, with, yeah, with exactly. a significant role in it. Exactly. Uh, tell me how you were presented with the with the movie. What attracted you to the script? What was kind of the initial uh, introduction to this film? Well, I they sent me the script. Um, I had a, a a call meeting, and and then um, well, they asked me if I liked the script and everything. They told me about the people that were involved, and I and I liked it and. And I liked the character, and I thought that the mm -hmm. movie was a very agile, you know, simple, just very entertaining action film. And um, and well, my character, you know, she's she's a, a very eager young mm -hmm. cop. You know, she's Puerto Rican, and and she's a strong girl who believes, you know, in the in a in like the, a good world and she wants to do the right things you know that's why she tells emil the character of emil her she, she's mm -hmm. like what do you mean we're not gonna go help these people that's that's why i'm here you know she got transferred from a neighborhood where nothing was happening to this neighborhood where there's more action and she's like well let's go she wants to make points she wants to impress you know she wants to get uh higher and higher and and she thinks that this is the way to do it and then this happens so it's like okay go make some points now <laughs> okay you did i mean yeah. most of your scenes it, it's amazing because you're like opposite basically mel gibson in most of your scenes which is that's i mean for any actor that'd be a huge like accomplishment milestone what was it like working with him because a lot of your scenes you kind of guys are going back and forth with each other and you know he's giving you a little bit of a tough time but you're like you said your character's spunky and going back at him in a lot of ways too. yeah she that. does <laughs> totally uh what was it like working with him what did you learn just being with him on set and because you you really had some scenes with some powerful actors emil hirsch to me is one of the most underrated actors in the industry he's just phenomenal uh, with the work he's done in the past and, and but what was it like just being with emil and, and mel uh, and, and kind of watching them work and what did you take away from it well at first i must say that i was um a, a little bit cautious because sometimes when you're the only girl i was doing the first weeks I had everything with Mel and then I had it with the mill. Uh -huh. So I was kind of cautious. Like I wanted to see how, how was the, you know, how, how were everybody was going to like behave us just like 
um because i'm a very open person and i don't know if people are going to be as open as me so mm -hmm. i'm like kind of cautious at first and then when i feel free i ask a lot of questions and i go in because i gotta <laughs> connect right so yeah. um they were actually really good to me they were very generous and i and not just that you know i i i fight back in real life and not in real life and um so with mel my experience was really good he's, he's a very serious actor and i think because he was not directing he was also feeling more like kind of relaxed we had time between scenes and scenes and I would yeah talk about different things and i was just making questions of, of like different topics and and also of course asking him things about you know the the guns the, the body language with the guns and different mm -hmm. types that i didn't know if i was gonna need and and of course he has so much experience and um and then with the mill when he learned that i was an act when that i was also a singer because mm -hmm. he's a singer and he's a songwriter we started like yeah he would just started giving me songs for me to sing and we were just like <laughs> songwriting in the middle of the scene you know we were like mm, da, da, da. okay keep that beat yes and i'll do this and i we, we were like like kids everybody was like i mean i think every actor is really a kid you're just a very if you're a good one you're kind of like a very disciplined kid and yeah you got to play so, right it's all about playing and it's interacting all about playing. it's all about playing and, and and creating and feeling feeling free you know to create and i think michael polish the director he kind of created that environment mm. she's a good director's job right to do which mm -hmm. is oh yeah creating a comfortable environment for you to create and feel free and that's kind of what we were doing with mel as well and with emil there's a lot of improvisation a lot of improv happening like emil would just you know add this thing and then i added him one more thing and he added a little bit and i was like okay now you should speak Spanish. You live in Puerto Rico. What are you doing? <laughs> and then, um, and Mel as well. He would, you know, change a few things of the scene, and I had to jump on it, jump on mm -hmm. whatever was happening. Because if not, you know, I didn't want to be late. So I was like, boom, boom, boom. You had to be very present. You know, I, I think that's a that's a mark of a good director to know your talent and let them trust them trust them in that way to to let them see their own version of things and let them flow with it i think that's always a good mark of a good director who recognizes he has talent and he trusts them by letting him play and improvise and do things that feel natural to them exactly and i was the last one to jump on the boat like i was the, the last actress on the on the on the, on the project wow. and and he actually really trusted me which i really appreciate everybody everybody mm -hmm. gave, like really yeah really nice to you know, I'm sure growing up in Peru, your like goal isn't to be a, a actor starring opposite these major icons. And, and did you, how did that happen? Because I mean, growing up in a place where I'm sure your parents were like, you're going to have a regular job, this and this, but you've broken out. You've obviously made a mark in, in singing in the musical world. And now obviously in, in acting, you've been doing it for years. What was your kind of dream? I mean, this must be a a, 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 literally a dream and you made it happen. How was that approach? I mean, how did your family initially feel about you going into entertainment and how did you really make it happen? Cause that, I can't imagine that'd be an easy thing growing up in a place like Peru where not everyone becomes an actor or anything like that. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. It's very difficult. We have, we are a country with 20, I don't know, 26 million people. Um, right in the middle of South America and we don't have a tons of opportunities and there's not a lot of jobs you know as an actor that pay well it's not the same than, than the States but I was lucky because I started when I was nine because my sisters they were like 13 years older than me and they were already working as singers and actresses and, and they were so happy and I just loved it I think I I was even more passionate than them because I, I was just a little girl and I would just play around the set and just watching, mm -hmm. you know, the guys carrying the, the wires, the cables and just, I don't know. I love the, the collaborative, uh, collective work, you know, and just to be able to be so free and play. And, um, and then when I was 17, I moved to New York. Mm -hmm. and That's well, a big move. For from coming from Peru at 17, you just go into a different world completely. New York's a different world for even us here in America, but that must yeah, have been I like grabbed, a culture shock. I grabbed my savings because mm -hmm. I've been working from like since I was nine, 
right? But I, I did my first commercial when I was three years old. And my mom didn't want to like do anything to like, she was like, you're the youngest, we're four brothers and sisters. And my father, she, he was in the military, he was a cardinal. But then he got invited to retirement. We didn't have enough money for six people in the family, you know? Right. And, but then I started working and I wanted to help my family, but she was like, like, no, this is not happening. My mom was also a producer. She was producing musicals and she was like, I'm not going to explode you. <laughs> you're going to be going to like be a normal kid. I want you to have a normal life. And I was like, no, I want to be an actor. I want to go to the set. So I would escape with my sisters. My sisters would like take me and I would go with them. And then, but I did have a really good childhood because I would just shut off in the summer and just be with my friends. My mom didn't want me to grab any place, anything during the summer. And then I, of course, I grabbed my savings. I went to New York, moved, moved. I remember when I was in immigration in New York City, the officer asked me, uh, how old are you? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm 17. And I'm like, did you already finish school? And I was like, yes, <laughs> just graduated because I, I graduated when I was 17. Uh -huh. Oh, no, when I was 16, actually. Wow. Uh, yeah, I was one year. And, uh, I don't know what happened. So uh, he told me, are you, where are your parents? He said, and I'm like, I have this paper. This is a paper that says that I am allowed to be here <laughs> on my own <laughs> with my savings. It was like a not not notarized document. Uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, I took that with me. And the officer was like, OK, well, you be safe. And I was like, OK, thank you very much. And then I studied acting and I did, my English wasn't even that good. I, my school was a military school. I didn't even like have good English classes. That's mm -hmm. And I had to go to a school for two months to take like intensive classes. But it really, you know, to be honest, it took me a long time to actually um, be able to feel free, you know, to speak and show my personality. Right. Because that's a big thing with a new language. And acting oh, yeah. in a different language, it's crazy it's i was just gonna so, ask you that it's so difficult it took me a while it's to be honest it took me a while because i had first of all i had to make pieces first of all i married a guy from kansas city from <laughs> you would never imagine that growing up i would never imagine that right. i was studying in here i would always come back to new york because i love the city and the theater and place and every year i would come back to new york and you know, and the last time I went, I was 25 and I said, okay, I'm just gonna stay here. And I'm just gonna, you know, change my, I get a working visa and I'm gonna start, you know, maybe acting in English, why not? I've been doing this my whole life and I want more challenges. Like I'm this person, I moved to Colombia when I was 18, then I moved to Spain, then I moved to Mexico. I've been working everywhere and I've, I've been, you know, getting to know all these different cultures and I felt that that American culture was a big part of me growing up because we used to watch all the American shows and movies, but I really didn't know the people that much. Um, and I'm a very curious person. So I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna stay. I think I wanna learn more and maybe they'll get to know more about my culture too, you know, I don't know. So basically it was very fun and it was very challenging to, you know, comedy in English is just American comedy. It's, it has a different timing. Oh yeah. Um, and getting to be able to just feel free with this new identity that you create to have uh, to transfer all your primal feelings and experiences from when you are a kid with your original language to a different language with a new identity um, and still be honest and still be connected to your primal to everything that's primal it's really it's really a big big challenge so of course, me, yes, let's take a big challenge. Boom. It took me like five <laughs> years. Do. It took me so long to be comfortable. And then this movie, finally, I feel like, okay, now I'm kind of like, I feel that like this is a good opportunity. It's a good step. It's just one more step in my career, but it's- No question. Step. Wanted to wrap things up, uh, ask you, you seem like a very, I mean, a person that goes for it in life, which I really admire. Someone that just doesn't say no and really challenges themselves and you've proven it through your life. What are some of your like hobbies and interests outside of performing that you like to do to kind of get away and escape, clear your mind? Do you have any certain things, passions and hobbies outside of uh, being a performer? Um, well, singing and songwriting is one of them. Yeah. I also dance. 
but that's that's the school that I had. So it's, yeah, it's kind of work too, but it's something that I love doing. Well, I read a lot. Uh, I like reading. Um, um, I read a lot of different people, uh, biographies and some novels. And well, I like sports, like outdoor activities, like kayaking, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, climbing. I like the different things, surfing um, and watching, you know, all the films and especially during this quarantine, mm -hmm. and watch all the films out there, all the series. So I'm like, okay. Anything I good? Anything that stood out to you? <laughs> Any recommendations? Uh, the last one that I that I watched was uh, Hollywood on Netflix. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. And then what else did I watch? Oh, I watched the the documentary about uh, Epstein. And... Mm hmm. Yeah, um, I keep watching different things. Yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> well, good. I I need to start watching good stuff. I'm just watching too much of 90 Day Fiance reality TV. <laughs> Oh, I watched that one. You did? Yeah, oh my God. and I told my mother-in-law to watch it. It's amazing. It's it, You can't get away from it. It's so funny. So you're learning from different cultures. I am, literally. I'm getting exposed to, to all sorts of world uh, and seeing it through, through the lives of people who are just, I mean, I, I don't know. The casting people on that show are just absolutely geniuses to, to find the, the characters and people they find. It's just so, so compelling. I'm glad that you say that because I gave that reference. I'm writing a script right now about uh -huh. um, my relationship with different cultures yeah. and the states and everything. So I kind of, yeah, I'm using that a little bit too. <laughs> you should probably. There's something to pull away. Yeah. Well, Thank you so much, Stephanie, for taking the time and going to the bathroom and really just, just finding time uh, at your mother-in-law's house to, to speak to me. Uh, awesome work. I, I really look forward to seeing you a lot more stuff. I was just so impressed that you did it in English and seeing it, and your English seems so seamless, really. Uh, mm -hmm. I just think there's more good things along the way for you. So I'm looking forward to seeing you a lot more stuff. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Shoot you in the head. I'm not going out that way. Remember, shoot to kill, kid. Hey, nice work, kid.